I was recently asked how I created the weeds and grass in this drawing. Well, from its design, through its build, to its final execution, its base is pure negative drawing. And that's based on the undeniable fact that we cannot draw white. This, in its most basic form, is how negative drawing works. Background first. That's what I'm creating here. These are the pure blacks, the deepest shade in foliage. And yes, the deepest shade is naturally black. It might surprise you how dark the gaps are between blades of grass or the stems of weeds. Imagine I'm creating areas like this, or this. Holes in foliage are very dark, because there's hardly any light getting into them if any at all. And those dark holes are essentially as far back as you can see. Using this system in the background and midground, you just create whatever feels natural to you. So for instance, that edge there is coming through to there. And that edge comes through to there. The background is the darkest value in these areas, and probably within the entire drawing. So now you know the full tonal range from the outset, from these blacks to the white of your paper. So each shape has two meaningful sides, and you close it off with a random side. This one will cause that one to curve around here. Don't let the holes get too big, otherwise you'd expect to see something in there and it will look unnatural. That edge carries on through here. But try to keep the edges parallel and each strand even in width, so the eye can follow them through. This is important. These are black holes and they have to be black and solid. The blacker they are, the more options you'll have later. Before we move on to stage two, Take a look at this and ask yourself, why can I clearly see individual leaves? And why do I know one is further forward than another? It's all to do with edges. What's happening here is that each layer casts shade on the one behind it. That in turn shades the layers behind that, and so on, until you can see nothing but black. Each darker layer behind exposes the edges of a lighter layer in front, so we can easily follow them. Our black background has clearly defined the edges of the background and midground leaves, or stalks, which are merely white silhouettes at present. So now we'll begin to make some sense out of this. Let's say this one is underneath this one. We'll let it come forward towards the light. That means this one has to be behind it. And so does this one. I'll push it even further back. Let's have this one going behind this one. And in front of this one. And this one can go along here. I'll push this right back so it almost disappears. The same with this one. So it's a method with many advantages. It preserves the white of your paper, the only white we have, until you know exactly what you want to do with it. It means no erasing back to white ever, because erasing never does return it to pristine white. It preserves the sharpness of edges, which erasing never does. Drad graphite always softens the edges of an erased line. It establishes references at each stage. You can't correctly judge the values required until you know what's behind the element you're drawing. With the background established, you can push the foreground into the shade because the shade is there, or bring it forwards. 
It breaks the drawing down into easily manageable parts. And it's fun. And taps directly into your imagination, which knows lifelike when it sees it. So that's the background and midground method. Now let's introduce the foreground, our weeds in this case, although negative drawing is applicable to drawing anything. The foreground is what interests the viewer and it tells them what the background is. So it's deliberately designed. It contains the composition and its balance, the clues to understanding everything behind it. And it needn't be completely accurate because you can alter it, add to it and clean it up as you go along. Think of these foreground elements as being placeholders marking positions and shapes, but not necessarily cast in concrete. Just create what you'd expect to see if you looked into that area in real life. Use your imagination, your innate sense of what looks natural, and you can't go far wrong. So let's make a start on the background by making the first black mark. I begin at the base because weeds grow upwards and the weeds at the base are closer to us so they'll be in front of those higher up. Remember these black holes are as far back as you can see, the absolute depth. Do not draw into those isolated foreground shapes. You cannot make viable decisions about them until they are surrounded by their environment. I'm going to push almost all of this area into the shade. I could leave this till later, but I'll push it back into the shade now, so I can get a feeling for what that looks like. You're creating little features for the viewer to discover if they delve deeper into the foreground. I don't think everything would be growing upright, so I'll push this area over to the right. Inventing the midground all the time, outlying it to keep its edges sharp, and isolating it like the foreground until I know what I want to do with it. I don't want too much detail in this area. I could easily overthink it, but simple is often the best choice. Here, I've decided to add a positively drawn weed. I can draw positively within this because this weed is physically darker than the grass behind it. And this darker weed adds depth by pushing the foreground grass further forwards. All these little things might seem to be a lot of work, but they combine to add a greater overall sense of realism. These, I think, are quite close to the foreground. That goes behind that one, so I'll throw a bit of shadow on it. I'll curve that off around here. There'll be a shadow from that one onto this. 
I'll leave it near the front. And this one even further forwards. I want to split this part up a bit. I do want to make a feature of this. Oh, there's a light a bit there. I like that, so I'll keep it. I'll throw a bit of positive drawing on top of that. Again, it will add more depth and interest. I'm going to invent some parts of a plant in here, negatively. I don't know what it is, but I think it might have shade-loving flowers. I'll take the white out. This part will be in the shade of that. I've decided this area in here is going to be quite dark, but it still needs some depth. So if you look into it, there are things to discover. What this way of working creates is sharp drawing that's never overworked and a good sense of realism because you're drawing what you'd expect to see. So I'm not going to just fill it full of black shading, partly because that would create a very large hole and in real life you'd expect to see something in a hole of that size. I'll change from 2B to HB to give me a little more control over the values. Now 2H I think. Not because I want it lighter, but again because it offers more control. This is mid-ground and this is foreground, so we don't want this to be using foreground values. Right now, I need to get some feeling for the foreground. This is the underside, the edge just highlighted. Just a touch of central rib and a narrow band of highlight along this edge. Very, very subtle. There are no rules, just work wherever you feel you need to. Although I haven't drawn the broken fence rail yet, I don't want it to dominate this area, so I'll push it back behind a big woody weed. This is a positive version of the one I drew lower down. It's dry, full of old seed heads, and the leaves departed long ago. Now I have some idea of the values I need for the rail. So it's time to begin work on it. Not all of it, just a section I can visualise alongside the drawn area below. I noticed that area is finished. I'll not be returning to it, apart from maybe adjusting a value or two later. This method promotes sharp one-time drawing, so overworking is essentially non-existent. As long as the shading is darker than the guidelines, at least no lighter, the guidelines will disappear into the shading.
I'll take the white out. I'll curve this away into the shade. I'll work on the foreground now. So that's coming up and tipping over and it will cast a shadow on that bit. The visible guideline here can represent the thickness of the shady side of the leaf, so that's okay. That, I think, is behind this one. So I'm going to push the base back a bit. This is behind this one, which is going to cast a shadow on it. And this one will curl down into the shade. The light might just catch that top edge, I think. And that will do for now. As you can see, what's behind the foreground elements need not be completely clear, as it isn't in nature. It just needs to be seemingly natural. But the work put into these areas is all important. When your viewer's gaze strays from the main subject into its surroundings, if those surroundings are lacking, you'll simply destroy all the hard work you put into the main subject. So, the negative drawing method, which involves working background to foreground, creates sharp drawing that's never overworked. And a good sense of realism, because you're always drawing what you expect to see. And its use is universal. In this drawing, almost everything was drawn using negative drawing. The dog's hair. The bushes and trees. The grass. They all share the same technique. And to learn more about the wonders of negative drawing, and much more, explore all the videos with me at drawwithmike.net, where I can answer all your questions on the support forum and subscribe here to my channel for more drawing tips and tricks. <music>